In this complex world, there are many complex questions. Of these complex questions, which is the most complex of them all? Many books have been written on various complex questions, and one of the most commonly found questions in all is, how did this universe come into being? If we look at the legends and the details in the Indian scriptures, they not only reveal to us that the stories of the origin of the universe seem to have amazing similarities with cutting-edge discoveries of modern science today, but they also show us how the Indian thought has held forth on questions that the modern science is yet to answer. The process of creation is available to us today through the Veda, Purana and many other literary texts of ancient India. The primary body of knowledge of the Indians is the Veda. The Rig Veda is the oldest available literature in the world, last known to have been compiled in 3100 BCE by Veda Vyasa. It is a compilation of various Rishi, seer scientists, their interaction with nature and their questioning of nature. A closer inspection of the Veda reveals that, while this interaction between the Rishi and nature may have occurred well over 5000 years ago, the contents of the passage are valid to this date in our scientific world. Today, the modern world calls the process of creation as the Big Bang. In this modern scientific world, many labs such as the CERN Laboratory of Particle Physics in Geneva, Switzerland, and the Fermi National Laboratory in the United States have been conducting various experiments as to what really happened in the immediate moments after the Big Bang. The very concept of the Big Bang from the cosmic egg came into the scientific parlance because of the postulate put forth by the Belgian Roman Catholic priest, Abbey Georges Lemaitre, a mathematician and astrophysicist in the year 1927. The Vedic Rishi were seer scientists of their times. They were at least over 400 of them. They all lived before 3000 BCE. One of the eminent Rishi, Rishi Parameshti, in his times seems to have asked this question how this universe and creation came to be. Rishi Parameshti's questioning and understanding of this process of creation is available to us today in the Nasadya Sukta of the Rig Veda. The Nasadya Sukta of the Rig Veda has this thought-provoking and profound description of the process of creation. The Nasadya Sukta talks of a golden-hued womb, the Hiranyagarbha, an indescribable power or energy center which is an oscillation. The Sukta talks of this oscillation as a form of breathing activity which expresses itself as a pulsating Hiranyagarbha. What makes this Hiranyagarbha pulsate? The Rig Veda speaks of two forces, one which is an externally pushing force and the other a force which holds back or holds in. The tug of war between these opposing forces goes on for a period at a standstill because both space and motion do not exist. This is an intervening period between two Brahma creation cycles when time is immeasurable. The seer Rishi Hiranyastupa Angirasa has described the interplay between the forces as a battle between Indra and Vritra in the Rig Vedic hymns. During this tug of war between the two kinds of opposing forces, at a particular moment, Indra, the externally pushing force, overcomes Vritra, the holding back force, causing the Hiranyagarbha to burst open and the universe to spring out. The Hiranyagarbha explodes and spews out manifested matter from which form the galaxies of Mandakini, stars and the rest of the universe. This breaking open of the Hiranyagarbha has been described as Brahmanda Visphotak or universal explosion which finds a similarity in the modern concept of the Big Bang. For us scientists, it is the Big Bang that holds the key to unlock the secrets of the universe. It's the Big Bang that spewed out constituents of matter that make me, you and all the nature around us. Could it be that the instruction manual of the universe that we're all seeking is available in the ancient Indian texts. If only we care to see. If only we effort to understand their point of view and language. The concept of the cosmic egg and the Big Bang in the modern world is less than 100 years old. It is therefore very intriguing how the ancient Vedic Rishi 
had divined the concept of Hiranyagarbha and their explanation of the process of creation is very similar to that of this cosmic egg and how it burst open to create this universe. The ancient Indian seers have connected with the event of the Brahmanda Visphotak or the Big Bang through Om, the sound created by the Big Bang which has since been reverberating throughout the universe. This Om is called Pranava or the primordial sound, the breath of the universe. A major breakthrough in our understanding of the workings of the universe came about when two physicists in 1978, Arno Penzias and Robert Wilson, discovered an ever-pervading microwave background radiation. This lent credibility to the fact that we are mere remains of an event that happened far beyond our comprehension of space and time. This cosmic wave background is a reverberation of that event and serves as a constant reminder of that event, namely the Big Bang. Isn't this similar to the concept of Ohm? All our experiments to search for the secrets of how creation took place have revealed the presence of tiny constituents of particles in the quark-grown plasma or the primordial soup. There's just one piece missing in this jigsaw puzzle, the existence of which we are able to predict with a great deal of accuracy and confidence. That is the Higgs boson or the God particle. Analysis shows it must be the appearance and presence of this God particle which must have triggered the free-floating massless particles in the cosmic soup to start acquiring mass and start to interact with one another to finally form the matter in the entire universe. Under the influence of the Higgs field, three quarks group together to make up a stable proton and many other particles which form the constituents of matter. These are formed within nanoseconds after the Big Bang. All our efforts to simulate conditions of the Big Bang at the Large Hadron Collider, though on a very minuscule scale, is with the hope that we can recreate such God particles just as we believe they should have appeared soon after the Big Bang. In these primordial waters, the Triguna or three universal characteristics, namely Rajas, Tamas, and sattva are neutralized, dormant, and lie patent. Primordial nature is thus said to be Trigunatmika Prakriti or a three characteristic based nature. The Veda, therefore, have explained the process of creation as evolution of matter from Paravastu to Vastu or subtle to gross. The ancient Rishi have thus explained the most critical step in the process of creation by approaching it from subtle to gross, in contrast to the modern scientific approach of working from the gross. There are still many open questions puzzling us scientists. For example, when we measure all the matter in the universe and put it together in models by cosmologists, astronomers, astrophysicists and physicists, we can account only for 4%. Where is the 96% that's missing? Is it in the form of dark matter or is it in the form of dark energy? Is there another universe or are there multi-universes? Are there extra dimensions other than space and time? Isn't it amazing how we have come to exist out of mere energy for the mere excess of matter over antimatter? What are the properties of this antimatter? What are the properties of this primordial soup out of which all this nature and all of us came to be? Human curiosity is as old as mankind itself and pushing the frontiers of knowledge is what we scientists are trying to do with the help of technology. If the ancient Rishi had realized, relished and shared with us the knowledge of the process of creation in the form of the concept of divinities in the Veda, the Purana, in the scriptures and sculptures, then where is the need to do further scientific research and conduct expensive experiments to unravel the mysteries of the universe? The answer to this question lies in the Ishavasi Upanishad, one of the primary, equally ancient, explanatory texts of the Veda. The Ishavasi Upanishad had obviously thought of this question 
and had preemptively answered it many thousand years ago itself. We are advised by the text that the pursuit of the unmanifested reality, the spiritual sciences alone, or the pursuit of the manifested or the material sciences alone will lead us to further darkness and misunderstanding. This universe and the creation is a mix of both the manifested and the unmanifested and a healthy mix of understanding of both will give rise to a simple answer. We had a path-breaking moment in science with Einstein's revelation of the relation between mass and energy. How mass and energy are interconvertible and how the total mass and energy in the universe is a constant. With a combined understanding of creation from the material sciences perspective and the ancient spiritual expression of science, we can perhaps hope to reach the next path-breaking moment in mankind's pursuit of science, namely the unraveling of the relation between the manifested and the unmanifested, the relation between matter and consciousness, how the total of all matter and consciousness leads to the all-pervading prakriti or nature, the scientific divinity.